Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. It's Monday, Mishmash Monday. We've got a few things to talk about today. I uh, want to keep these videos a little bit on the short side for the month of August, so uh, let's get started right away. Okay, next up, a good friend of the show and a good friend of most of you. You all know him as T-Rex, uh, Tom over in Connecticut. Tom had a question. Uh, he just got a nice toolbox and uh, he really never stacked one before and, and filled it up and wanted to know if there was any uh, good tips on filling your toolbox. And it's a great question because, you know, we do it, but um, everybody always usually comes up with something, a really good idea. Maybe you could share it with us in the comments. I'm going to show you how I do mine, but I'm not 100% satisfied with it. I wonder if uh, if I could learn something from your comments and let me know what you think. Let's uh, let's see what we're okay, talking about. Okay, this is my trusty Craftsman three-tier box. You can see I got the uh, bottom roll away, the midsection. The midsections are fantastic. They're really worth uh, picking one up. And then you got the top section here. Um, uh, like I said, I've had this for a long time. I filled it up just what I thought I was going to use for years and I got used to it. However, I don't think it's the best way to do it. As you can see, any, any horizontal surface in your shop will always become a shelf, as this has. You can see I made a little uh, shelf to kind of organize some things on here, but uh, <laughs> I never go in this top opening you know that's why i'm not crazy about having a, a section i would have rather have another drawer here and just have that flat much like the center section is but in there i put tools that i only use in a, a very very rare occasion because if obviously if i have to use it i have to remove all that stuff so keep that in mind only put stuff like you know things you'll never use in that top section unless you're going to leave it open all the time in your shop and accumulate dust uh, the top drawers, obviously I have a lot of wrenches, things like that, that I keep in the top that I've had for, for a long time, that uh, different types of open ends, things like that. I don't use that much. My main section here, the, these five middle drawers I use all the time. Obviously I have uh, my nut drivers, Craftsman nut drivers, I have some vice grips, things like that in there. Uh, here I have my open ends, uh, a couple of uh, different stubby wrenches I've been using a lot more. I'm really liking those. Uh, here's my channel lock drawer. I use a lot of pliers. I do use a lot of pliers. Um, over here, again, more pliers. <laughs> it's, it's a mess, I know, because I. what happens is you get too much stuff. Now, what I like to do is I, I line the drawers with, uh, you could buy this uh, shelf rubber at, uh, at Home Depot or, uh, and that's much cheaper than buying the stuff, the shelf liners from a toolbox. But here I have carpet. I literally had some, uh, a new old stock carpet that I cut up and, and put in here. And it's a real nice uh, holder for the, uh, for your tools without scratching them up. Obviously this is my screwdriver drawer. And then the bottom, the middle section, uh, this is some specialty tools. Again, this is where you want, you don't want to be bending down a lot, so this is where your most uh, tools are. But some uh, uh, gunsmithing screwdrivers, things like that. I use a lot of screwdrivers, as you know, as we most do. And uh, here's where my hammers. I use, this is specialty hammers. I have a regular two or three hammers that I leave out. I use all the time, but here is some, uh, just some specialty hammers that, you know, you keep in a drawer. And here's some heavier duty specialty hammers, but the uh, irregular hammers you leave out, you know, one or two in a soft blow. And then for the bottom ones, again, you're not in here much, but over here I have, uh, believe it or not, sockets. I don't use a lot of sockets, but this is basically my socket drawer. I know it's a mess, it's embarrassing, but, you know, I'm just showing you that the, the, the further down you get is the let the tools you're going to use the least amount. So when you start getting down to the bottom drawer, those you have tools in there that you hardly ever use. Now I have multiple boxes. I have machinist boxes for machinist tools. I have uh, woodworking tools for just woodworking. But you know, let us know in the comments how you set yours up. You know, do you have some people? I used to work in a garage where. Uh, some mechanics that if they were doing a certain type of job, let's say they were doing bushings or something, everything they would use would be in one drawer and that's, that's their go-to drawer and then the other drawers would be, so it would be a mix, but everything they use in one day would be in that constant drawer and that drawer most times would be like almost worn out from going in and out every day. But let us know in the comments how you set your, your uh, toolbox up and I'm sure to help Tom 
uh, because this is something you, you, you kind of lose sleep over thinking how can I do it the best way and I don't want to have to keep redoing it so let us know in the comments what you do. Okay, next up, uh, this week I was looking for uh, some projects, you know, that I wanted to, I felt like doing this week, you know, and again, it's still hot, so I don't want to be down here super long, but, uh, you know, I'm watching my buddy John Fix, who has a great channel, and John just sent me some, uh, some beautiful stickers for his new stickers, which I really appreciate, John, and, uh, you got to check out his channel, but John has been doing a lot of screwdrivers, great jobs on his screwdriver, and, you know, again, you feel, you get into a mood where you, uh, I'll do three, four, five, six screwdrivers at a time and then you can move on to something else but John was doing some screwdrivers and and uh, I said you know I feel like doing a screwdriver and I was looking through some of the ones I have but I said you know what I'm gonna let you decide which one you want to see done now here are us uh, four nice contenders for a, uh, a screwdriver restoration and uh, uh, you know I'll do something different you know we got this, this heavy-duty one that we picked up from Phil. This one here, the nice, you know, we always like these 660s, right? These are just beautiful. And the perfect handle, HD Smith. And then we got the, a couple other ones here. So this is one, two, three, four. Again, from top down. One, two, three, four. Let me know in the comments. Just leave a number which one you would like to see restored first. One, two, three, or four. And we'll get that done this week if we now can. for today like i said i wanted to do this because this like I, again i picked this up from phil over at uh elephant trunk uh, last week and this is a craftsman screwdriver but i believe it was made by vaughn and i'll tell you some of the telltale hand uh why i think it was made by vaughn uh, you see this little wood plug <laughs> remember the whole reason we buy are all steel hammers so you don't have to worry about the head loosening up they're almost bulletproof but vaughn put these wooden plugs in their heads to uh reduce it's supposed to reduce vibration i don't know it could be that their molds for their hammer heads just had that hole and they figured they they got to plug it anyway who knows right but they say that that's supposed to be vi vibration dampening plug but um we got some issues with this hammer you could see here we have you know the back Again, I want to make this into a user or something I can just leave around at the shop and not have to worry about. So I'm going to fix it up, clean it up, just make it, you know, presentable. Look at how it used to look. That's the way it came from the factory. But obviously all that chrome has worn off. Uh, again, you can see here it says Craftsman. Uh, we might lose this. This is one of them laser etched or something. You see that Craftsman? And I'm not, you know unfortunately if they don't want to and you can see the price i didn't even pay that phil gave me a good deal on this so let's uh let's see what we got the face not too bad but uh and we got a little bit of that kind of bad rust up here on the top you know that kind of pitting so remember what that looks like let's have some fun and a little we got a little split on the handle here but other than that the handle's real good let's just make this into something that we'll use all the time now we're going to be working on the back the claw part of the hammer here you know that has little chips up so we're going to replace the sanding there now to do that there's a little wrench a spanner wrench a pin wrench that comes with the tool and you just loosen up this little collar here remove your flap disc place on your uh, this is a grinding disc you see here it's a kind of a solid disc it'll hold up much better i don't want to ruin the flap disc on the corner and then just tighten this down here like this on here you've got there's a little button on the back of here that locks it you're going to lock it down and you could turn it by hand like that and it'll lock itself in so that's how you change the disc. Now we're going to use this to fix up. Now you can claw. see here's the claw we have here and you can see how it's chipped and danked. We're going to take this across and uh, just, you know, trim that up because this is all chipped up. This is no good. It's been used a lot and abused. We're going to just straighten that out. because we took off the top here and we got rid of all those uh breaks and chips and stuff we left that it was a little bit thicker profile you see there now what we did was we're going to take instead of taking it all off one side we'll take a little bit off the bottom here and then we'll take a little bit off the top and make that we don't want it to be super sharp but you have to be able to get under something if you want to pry it up so it's got to be just a little bit thinner than that is We did that step on the belt sander because you could see it just brings it down. It gives you a nice contour 
like this and you can see we have this down to right about where we want it we don't want it any thinner than that although you could if you were doing trim work you might want it thinner but that's just where i want it and then uh, now we'll work on the rest now normally this round object would be perfect for the belt sander but it was so deep the pitting you can see there you see that pitting was just so it was deep so i went with the, you know with the uh, flap disc it just works much quicker get it down to this then you finish up with the belt sander see the difference now the belt sand is always going to leave small minute scratches and to soften them out we use the fiber wheel but uh ben mall was nice enough to send over these fiber belts for me to try out. They didn't fit his machine, but they seem to fit my machine well, and we're going to try that out. Now, unfortunately, as I was doing this, I realized that I, I left some pits. You see those pits up here on top? I have to go back to the belt sander and start over. Okay, now here's this part where I say, if you're a purist, turn the, what, look at this, and then just shut the video off. You have a nice day. We had fun. Okay, if you're a purist, you'll say, oh, all right, good, man. He cleaned it up. It looks like NOS. However, you know what we like to do here. We like to have a little fun experiment. Let's take it to the next level. G. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this hammer looked like before we started. Well, we're calling this project done. You can see here we just took it a little bit over the top here, you know, like we like to do. We uh, jeweled the head a little bit you know that always looks nice right it always adds a little class to it we did a little red on the back and the facets and look at that red too that's you know we did that and oven baked it you know put it on top of the furnace so that it the paint just really settles in there uh the handle all the pits are gone you had to do that over again i hate doing work twice face came out really nice right look at that nice satin face and around the top all that rust was gone from here did the top here uh linseed oil the top wood here uh look how nice this came out right just like a factory finish and of course the claw remember the claw was what we started with and you remember what that looked like before and now how nice it looks right nice thickness to it and the handle uh, did it, filled in that area, where, uh, warning wear safety goggles with white, and uh, arm rolled the handle, cleaned it up with the, you know, so it is a, there we go, what do you think of this, it's a little bling bling for a three dollar hammer, <laughs> that's always my favorite, taking the three dollar tools and making them into something, something unusual. So in closing, uh, let me know what you think of that hammer, the, uh, that was Phil, Phil from uh, Elephant Trunk, special thanks to him for selling me that uh, hammer at a very good price. And uh, also remember two things. One, let us know in the comments how you stack, how, what, how you fill your drawers or your toolbox. And uh, secondly, what screwdriver you want to see restored. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.